Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Nunn Chair, during the year 1973, King Norodom Sihanouk came apparently to pay a visit to Cambodia and went to Phnom Kulen. Can you tell us who took the decision for that trip to be made? What were the reasons behind it and how did it go? Response, Your Honour. In 1973, when the king was in Beijing, he intended to conduct a visit. to his children, so-called his people, in the country. And therefore he contacted through China the Communist Party of Cambodia. And the Communist Party of Cambodia were pleased and accepted to receive his royal visit. However, at that time, Vietnam opposed the visit. They said, if the king went there, the king had to go through the Ho Chi Minh route before he arrived before he arrived in Cambodia and there would be kept secret if he went through the Ho Chi Minh route no one would allow would be allowed to go to that way except the Vietnamese and the Vietnamese troops as a result, the king contacted the Vietnamese so that he could travel through Ho Chi Minh Trail. And Vietnam did not allow the Chinese cadres to accompany the king. He appointed a general, a Vietnamese general, and a number of troops to escort the king from Hanoi through the Ho Chi Minh Trail to Stung Train by a small car. When they arrived in Stung Trang, the Communist Party of Cambodia, with Pol Pot the secretary, was in charge of the safety of the king. That is why There were a number of troops put in place to guard the safety of the king. At that time, American planes were bombing tremendously in 1973. Those planes included F-5, Phantom B-52 
and the spy planes were flying back and forth to monitor along the Mekong River. Nevertheless, the Communist Party of Kampuchea prepared everything in order to safeguard the safety of the king. Therefore, when the king arrived in Stung Trang, the king crossed the Mekong River going forward to Krati province. And as I remember, he went to Kampung Thom where he took a rest in a commune called Bangkrum in Pravihir province, says the accused. The king stayed there for a while. And Pol Pot appointed me and Nguyen Chia to prepare to arrange the travels to Angkor Temple. And there we built a house for the king. And and his wife. It was very dangerous at that time. There were many planes flying over, back and forth. However, we were able to safeguard the safety of the king. So that he traveled safely and arrived in Siem Reap. And he went to stay in the house that had been built in a mountain and he praised the place. He said it was small, but it was beautiful. He was very satisfied. And he did not expect that the Communist Party of Kampuchea had the ability to safeguard his safety. And after that, people in Pravihir province and in the nearby provinces, including monks, were summoned to receive the king. And re religious ceremonies were held, and the king greeted those people. It took about seven days for the king to stay there, and he toured Angkor Temple. He praised the leaders of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, that they were attentive to his safety, and he felt grateful to them. And after that, they escorted the king back and they also took 
the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Crossing the Mekong River. And on that way, there were submarines of the enemies going back and forth as well. But they were able to deliver the king to the other side of the river. And from that point onward, the Vietnamese troops took charge, escorting the king back to Ho Chi Minh through the Ho Chi Minh Trail. What was the reason why Vietnam did not allow the Chinese to escort the king? That was because Vietnam was trying to grab the power from China because Vietnam did not want China to have any influence on Cambodia. That is why, for whatever it would take, Vietnam would try to take this job. But as I understand, the king was not very happy with that because the king already contacted China So after that, the king went back to Hanoi and he arrived in Beijing safe and sound to continue his leadership of the struggle. So this is my narrative of his travel. As you recall it, Mr. Nunchia, was the king able to meet Pol Pot? Or what members of the standing committee did the king meet? Your Honour, there was a reception party for the king. But I'm sure the king would have met Pol Pot Sun Sen Ying Sri. Ying Sri was accompanying the king and some other zone cadres. And as for me, I did not attend the party. That is why I do not know for sure who else were there. Because my task was to safeguard the king from Pung Krum, says the accused. Merci, Monsieur Nchia. Je voudrais maintenant. Thank you. About the fighting that took place between 1970 and 1975, can you tell us if you were kept regularly informed about how the military operations were evolving and what the outcome of the battles and combat was? What information did you have at your disposal? Response. Like what I have told you, Your Honor, I was not responsible for the military. I was responsible for education. However, I was also aware of the fighting. But I was not sure myself because I did not go to the fighting myself. The military cadres went to the fighting.
Monsieur Nunchia, est-ce que vous pouvez... Mr. Nunchia, can you, for example, tell us about the fighting that took place at Udon? Were you told about this fighting? Did anything particular happen at those events? I was not aware of that. Vous nous avez parlé de you talked to us about the evacuation of Phnom Penh. As far as you are aware, were other towns that were also taken also evacuated? As far as I know, there were also evacuations in major in other major towns. For example, the Krati town in Krati town there was no evacuation. because the evacuation was under the control of the military. For example, the evacuation of Phnom Penh. For that evacuation, there was a military committee who were taking care of that. And as for me, I was responsible for education. So we had this uh, a different jobs. We have the military administration and we have the assembly job. For me, I am responsible for education and not for the military. Why were the other towns evacuated in, as far as you know? It depended on the zone committees because at that time there were div divisions uh, for different uh, committees. As I remember, there were the East Committee, the East Zone, the North Zone. The yeah, northwest zone. There was also the northeast zone. And so, the authorities to decide on the evacuations were on the zone committees. It was for the zone committees to decide whether evacuation was to be done or not. Just to be certain that I've understood, it was the zone committees that decided on their own without referring back to the standing committee. They were the ones empowered to take decisions such as that on their own. And in which case, what was the reaction of the standing committee? Here. Zone committees had the authorities to do that. And there was no reaction from the standing committee because the standing committee was far from those people. And the power was delegated to the zone committees to decide on this issue. That is, the zone committee will have to see. It depends on the. It depended on the, um, the fertility of the land to decide how many people were to be evacuated to their zone. Com the central committee and the standing committee were not able to understand these situations fully, as they already delegated the powers to the zone committees. Let me tell you this, everything had to be decided very quickly, otherwise 
they would miss their chance. For example, when there were enemies attacking us, there was no need to seek approval from the Central Committee or the Standing Committee. The Zone Committees were entitled to deal with the situation. Otherwise, they would miss the chance to, re to respond to the situation. As far as I know, it was the, the guerrilla attack plan that is to attack as quickly as possible, to confiscate weaponry as quickly as possible, and to retreat as quickly as possible. And that was, there was no need to seek approval to do that from the superior. And this is the special, uh, this is what has been specified in the, the lines, the party's lines that we had to be self-reliant and to be self-mastery. Mr. Nunchia. Are we to understand that in the delegation of power that uh, was made outwards towards the heads of the zones, the standing committee had planned for the cities to be evacuated? Was that something that had already been understood in the delegation of authority, even if the decision to actually do so had not yet been taken? As I have said, this issue was under the decision of the zone committees. Mr. Nunchia, I understand that the Zone Committees decided on those questions, but you also talked about a delegation of authority to the Zone Committees. Who was responsible for delegating that authority, and how far did it go? Was it already planned within the framework of that delegation of power that towns and cities could be evacuated. For this issue, as far as I know, the Central Committee held meetings in order to decide And the standing committee provided their opinions and their analysis. They could provide their opinions, but the decision was to be decided by the zone committees. You talked about the criteria that were taken into consideration when deciding about evacuations and one of them, if I understood correctly, was the fertility of the land. Please tell us a little bit more about that particular criterion of the fertility of the land. With regards to the criteria of the fertility of the land, we used plants as fertilizers, chemical fertilizers were not allowed to be used, but people were allowed to use the 
animals remains to transform those into the fertilizers to make the land become fertilized because using natural fertilizers would provide us double outcome I'm not quite sure about the link between the fertilizers and the evacuation of the cities. I'm not sure there is one, but let me ask you another question. Could the standing committee stand in the way of the evacuation of certain towns? And did that ever happen? As far as I know, there had no opposition from the standing committee because that job was already delegated to the zone committees and so the zone committees were to be responsible for that. Well, finally, Mr. Nun Chia, have you heard of a list of seven super traitors and who drew up that list and when and uh, what was its purpose? I have never heard of that. I have never known of that, but I have heard of that. But I was not one of the those who made the decision. I have heard of that through radio broadcasts. Yeah, Thank you very much, Mr. Nunchia, Mr. President. I have no further questions to put to the accused. Well, the President, thank you, Judge Lavenge. I'd like to check if any other judges of the bench would like to question Mr. Nguyen Chia. If not, I'd like to give the floor now to the prosecution to put the question to the accused Nguyen Chia, if you have. Thank you, Mr. President. If you just give me a moment to uh, set up our podium. Good morning, Mr. Nunchea. Mr. Nunchea? Nunchea, yes, I hear you. In the statements you've made um, since the trial is, has begun, you've repeatedly pointed the finger to Vietnam and made some general assertions about how they exercised control over the party in Cambodia. So I, want, I wanted to clar start by clarifying one thing that's quite, quite important. Um, you, you do not seem to me to be a person who would have taken orders or instructions from Vietnam or from any other country. So what I wanted to ask you is, during the period that you were the deputy secretary of the party, can you confirm that you were not a puppet of Vietnam. Response. Allow me to comment, uh, Mr. Réponse. Prosecutor.
the Indo-Chinese Communist Party, the Parti Communist Indochinois, was not created by the Cambodian n'a people. N'a pas été créé par les Cambodians. Let we be specific on that. Il faut que, que nous soyons précis. It was created by the Vietnamese Communist Party. Il a été créé Party. par le Parti communiste vietnamien since 1930 en 1930 that is from my recollection and after the establishment of the party in 1930 le PCI a donc été créé en 1930 après quoi as far as i know because at that time i was still very young but i heard people talking about that Cambodian people disliked the Vietnamese. They really hated the Vietnamese. Non pas aimé so the Communist Party of Vietnam et donc, le Parti did not Vietnamien expand that much. N'a pas However, at a later stage, réussi à s'élargir. Mais à, à plus tard, it, it was around 1950 vers 1950 I cannot recall the year that well Vietnam contacted a Cambodian person in Kampuchikram who was a monk uh, Cambodian, un moine cambodien du Cambodia-Krom. Il s'appelait Adja Mien. C'était le nom qu'il portait en tant que moine Wat-tang. à Wat Thang. It was actually a Vietnamese Buddhist pagoda. Qui était une a lot of Vietnamese who were residing in Cambodia liked to go to that pagoda. So Ajamian was contacted by the Vietnamese in order to organize a revolutionary organization. However, The reason why Ajamin changed his name to Sung Ngoc Minh was that at that time, that is post the Geneva Agreement, this so-called so-called Sung Ngoc Minh was influential amongst the intellectuals. Sung Ngoc Minh était and amongst une personne, the public servants. personne influente parmi les intellectuels et les fonctionnaires. And he was also famous as a patriotic. Il était aussi uh, connu comme patriote. Opposed who there to oppose the monarchy and the French colonies. À la monarchie et au colonialisme français. For those reasons. The Pour ces raisons, Vietnamese instructed Ajamin to leave his manhood and to return to Tai Ninh. Retourner à Tai Ninh. Actually, we call that Rong Dam Rai. Que nous appelons en Khmer Rong Dam Nang. And then his name was changed to Sung Ngoc Minh. C'est là qu'il s'est fait appeler Sung Ngoc Minh. And that person, who was named Sung Ngoc Minh, organized a Mutkiha organization. And there were three or four main figures. There were Sung Ngoc Minh, Ajamin, formerly, Siu Heng, Heng, Uncle Tu Samut, Samut, and Mr. Lam Pai. Pai. This letter was also a Khmer Actually, all of them were Khmer Krom from Tai Ninh. Vietnam uh, 
rather Lampai Lam Lampai was the in law of Sung Ngoc Thanh. And the as Vietnam observed that relationship, they instructed Lam Pai to liaison and to convince Sung Ngoc Thanh avec Sok Ngoc Thanh to join the national committee Mukiha, Mukiha, which means the National Liberation Committee. Qui veut dire Comité national de libération. At, at that time, Sir Ngoc Thanh wrote an elephant Thang. to the mountain. Et However, montagne à l'époque. he was ambushed by à the enemy, là, il est, il est and as he could not go, he returned. Et comme il n'a pas pu aller jusqu'au bout, il a fait, il a rebroussé chemin. After that, a party of the Indo-China was formed. C'est après cela qu'a été créé le Parti communiste indochinois. That was in the year of 1951. And actually, three parties were formed Trois parties, en fait, ont in été that créées year, cette année-là. even though the name entitled Indo-Chinese Communist Party, they could not mobilize the popular forces to join that party. And And for that reason, the party was divided into three separate parties. parties However, all the three parties were still under the control of the Vietnamese. They have their people at every level from the central level up to the village level. They have what they call Ban Can Su, that is the Vietnamese party leading and directing the National Liberation Committee. That National Liberation Committee was under the Controlled and ordered of the Vietnamese Communist Party, donc du Parti communiste vietnamien, where Nguyen Thanh Son was in charge, qui était au commande, in the South Vietnam, au Sud Vietnam. The Vietnamese actually controlled the Cambodian National Liberation Committee. Le National and below that, even at the zone level, Et there was still the Vietnamese zone, committee controlling. Qui and par les for Vietnamiens. the army at that time, it was the same. Although chose. the name is referring to the Cambodian people, même like si Aja Chum, Aja Chiu, Aja Pu Kambao, or Aja Swa, the actual commanders sont des Cambodgiens, les were those of the Vietnamese. Des Vietnamiens. The Cambodian commanders were just the figurehead. Euh, This is a summary of voilà, the donc, event. En résumé, so in summary, Vietnam controlled et pour everyone le Vietnam until after the Geneva Convention in 1961. Après les accords de Genève et jusqu'en 1961. Vietnam, even up to that year, was still le Vietnam infiltrating inside the Cambodian territory. Infiltrer le territoire cambodgien jusqu'à cette année. Le Yun, par exemple, les douanes. Was actually in Phnom Penh. It was Phnom Penh. At the south of the Yukonto School, I know this person very well. Uh, je le connaissais très bien.
So the so-called Indo-Chinese Communist Party, which was later on divided into three separate parties, including one of the Cambodian Popular Communist Party, and in Laos it was named similarly, and the Vietnamese was called the Vietnamese Labour Party, or Loidong. The changes were only in the name, but the leadership and control was still that of the Vietnamese. Et les commandants restaient that was for that phase of the voilà pour ce qui concerne movement. Cette phase du and mouvement. by 1960, à compter de 1960, Vietnam started their armed struggle Vietnam a commencé sa lutte armée to liberate South Vietnam. Pour libérer le Sud Vietnam. But they did not have a territory to occupy. Mais then they came to request for seeking their refuge in de, de Cambodia. So they came to Cambodge. take refuge in Cambodia, Cambodia including Nguyen Van Linh, Aiso, etc. Even Lei Jun Aiso, himself also came to take refuge in Cambodia. Au Cambodge. And I witnessed that uh, Personally, j'en étais moi-même le témoin. This attests to the fact that the Vietnamese party relied on the neutral political line of la ligne de Cambodia du Cambodge in order to use it as uh, a support base to struggle to liberate the South de Vietnam. Du Sud Vietnam. Let me pause at this point. Mr. Nguyen Che, to give you another chance, I, I am not asking you about the period of the 1930s, 1940s, or 1950s. I'm asking you about the period after September 1960, when you had formed your own party and established your own political lines. After that time, during the 1960s and 1970s, as the deputy secretary of the party, were you a puppet of Vietnam, or did you make your own decisions? Response. Réponse. At that time, I was not a puppet à of the Vietnamese. However, for certain affairs, we had to have discussions with them. Starting from 1960. À partir de 1960. The the Communist Party of Cambodia has its own tactical and strategic lines, which were separate from the Vietnamese ones. De la ligne vietnamienne. At that time, we held the view that if we que wanted our own independence, si nous notre independence, we needed to have our own strategic and tactical lines et notre independent from other parties, as I stated since the 5th or the 6th of December, we would not be subordinate to Vietnam. So is it correct then, Mr. Noon Chea? that during this period, during the period from September 1960 forward, after you had established your own political lines, that the standing and central committees of the Communist Party of Kampuchea were not puppets of Vietnam, but made their own decisions. Is that correct?
Réponse. Nous prenions nos propres décisions. Vietnam did not have the right to do so. However, if we say they were satisfied with our decisions, no, they blamed us. They blamed that the Communist Party of Cambodia was leftist. Ils ont, ils ont taxé le PCK de gauchisme. That we struggled with a line inappropriate to the Marxist-Leninist. That is what I can recall. Voilà And they also blamed the Communist ils ont Party aussi of Cambodia. that we did not seek consultation de with the Vietnamese party. Le parti vietnamien. And then the CPK replied that Ce à quoi le PCK a répondu, we are independent, disant que neutral, nous étions indépendants, and we have our own sovereignty, neutre, que nous avions notre propre souveraineté, and we sold conduct our business based on the real situation in our country. De la situation However, if comrade Vietnam, que si les camarades vietnamiens, at that time we still used the word comrade, encore camarade, and if comrade Vietnam si would like to give us some advice, nous des conseils, of course we would accept it, otherwise we would do it by our own initiative. Sinon, nous procéderions de notre propre initiative. When you said that the Vietnamese Question. party complained that you were leftist, what did you mean by that? Gauchisme, qu'entendez-vous par là? Response. Réponse. Leftist in this sense means gauchisme that ici we struggle, we conducted armed struggle. Que nous Menions la and lutte. that they said the opportunity was not yet arrived for armed struggle. They told us that comrades do not need to conduct armed struggle yet. We need to wait until Vietnam liberates the South Vietnam first. Libère le Sud Vietnam d'abord. Then they would just Ensuite, then they would deploy their soldier to attack Phnom Penh, and Phnom it would only take them 24 hours to do so. Que 24 heures. So, you comrades, you only Donc, need to prepare camarade, some guys to lead us there. Paul uh, Pot replied uh, that a répondu, whoever wants to take an action, that person of course would want to benefit from it. And that And for that reason, the CPK saw conduct its own affair, own business, educate it itself, and not to rely on another party. In parti particular, cela, not to rely on the Vietnamese party, party because the Vietnamese party had uh, numerous tricks under their sleeve avait, uh, in order to encompass and control the Communist Party of Cambodia. And that they would be able to lead us if that is the case. Qui, uh, leur permettrait alors de nous diriger. For that reason, there were conflicts, and Pour later on, it led to armed conflict. Conflit, en définitive, un conflit armé. Mr. President, I'd like to seek your leave to use the bathroom. Je voudrais utiliser les toilettes, si vous le voulez bien. The President, yes, uh, President, you can do so. Security guards, could you take him to the bathroom?
joint sa prinya rong on rakit to the international deputy deputy prosecutor you may not proceed with your question bánh bánh khem tư tư tức bán xong ăn nhà đúng The president, it's okay now as you already returned. Deputy prosecutor, you may now continue with your question. Monsieur le coprocureur, vous pouvez poursuivre. Thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Président. At this time, I'd like to show Mr. Nunche a document that's in the case file, which is D366. D366 slash 7.1.410. It's possible to have uh, uh, this document uh, shown to uh, Mr. Nunchea. Mia disposition de Nunchea. Mr. Nunche, you've been handed a, a document um, that are handwritten notes entitled The Past Struggle of Our Campuchian Peasants from 1954 to 1970 that at the bottom of the first page are attributed to you and that appear to contain a history of events provided by you. Do, do you recognize this document? Excuse me for interrupting. And is it possible to get a copy of the, the document so that we can have a look at it as well? Pour que nous puissions aussi savoir de quoi il retourne. Uh, Council, it's, it's on the case file. You have computer access, which is how we're intending for all of us to access documents. Because it's not shown on the screen, and we have no uh, reference to any English translation. Court officer, could you show the document on the screen? That is the document cited by the prosecution so that the parties and the chamber are able to view it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, if you may, we, we did intend when we got to specific questions regarding this document to show the Khmer version on the screen to, to help with the witness. Uh, I certainly I have the ERNs for the other languages, but in terms of other counsel following along, these documents are available on the computers that we all have here. Um, so I can provide uh, Mr. Nunche's counsel with the ERN in English, but in terms of what we intended to show on the screen, it would be the Khmer, Khmer version of the document. And, and counsel, the, the English version is ERN 00716409. Through to seven one six four three zero 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 soixante et onze soixante quatre zero neuf à trente. Mr. President, if, if uh, uh, we have the document up on our screen, if you would like to switch to our uh, uh, our screen, de nos ordinateurs, on peut l'afficher sur uh, l'écran de tout le monde. So my first question 
uh, Mr. Nunche, is whether you recognize this document. Is this your handwriting, or is this the handwriting of someone who uh, took a statement from you in 1998? Response. Mr. President, let, allow me to speak. I have never seen this Monsieur document, je jamais and vu the handwriting is not Et mine. L'écriture n'est pas la mienne. My handwriting is different from bon, this. I can show you if you allow me to write. Si souhaitez, this is the first time that I see this document. Can you look at the bottom of the first page, and do you see there where the words appear uh, by Nunchea? Is that also not your handwriting on the, on the very first page at the bottom? Response. This is not my handwriting. Non, ce n'est pas mon écriture. Because I ne have never seen this document Je jamais before. Vu ce document. And my handwriting is not this neat. Et mon écriture n'est pas aussi propre. Did you meet with a Kem Nun in 1998, around May 1998, at which you provided him with a statement regarding the history of the movement? from 1954 to 1970. Response, can you clarify your question? Whom did I meet? I did not quite catch your question. Please clearly state the name. I apologize if my if my pronunciation is not is not correct. Uh, do you know a Mr. Kem Nun, and did you meet with him in 1998 and provide him with a statement regarding the history of the movement from 1954 to 1970? Response, uh, Mr. President, I never met this person come noon. No, I ever handed this document to any person. Mr. President, my, my national uh, council colleague has told me that the name was not uh, pronounced or translated correctly in Khmer. Um, so le le let me try again. Uh, and perhaps it would help if I spell it phonetically. Uh, the way it is spelt phonet phonetically in English is first K H E M and then N G U N. Pronounced Kem Noon. Do you know this person and did you meet with him in 1998? Your Honor, I reiterate that I never known or met this person. Could you clarify his occupation and where do you think I met him? Can you clarify this point? Says the accused. Well, Mr. Ninchea, I'm not the one who met with him, so I, I will give you, we also have a typed version of this document that identifies the person, 
So I will provide uh, the uh, Khmer version of the type document, which is IS 20.28, in which you can see the individual's name. And then I will ask you again whether you met with him in 1998. Mr. President, if I may uh, forward to uh, the witness in ER, uh, this is a document that is in the case file as IS 20.28. The Khmer ERN pages that I'm going to uh, ask be shown to the accused are 00078183. Through 78206. And for, for the record, too, this is one of the documents cited in the portions of the closing order that were read, and that therefore, pursuant to the uh, court's previous order, uh, were considered. Uh, put before the chamber subject to objections. The court officer is now instructed to forward the document to the accused. Can this document be also shown on the screen so that the parties and the chamber can examine? Uh, could you activate your mic before you speak? Hi, I can say. The accused. For this document, as I remember, it was an unofficial document. It was not an official document. And as for Kam Ngun, as far as I know, He was sent by Mr. Hun Sen as a spy, and his code number is 09. But um, I acknowledge this is the case. I said during that time the history of the party. But I don't think I talked about this issue directly. There was a taped, a recorded tape. I never addressed someone by the word I or me, derogatory word. But as I can see in these documents, it appears that I use this word. But I acknowledge that I did talked with Kaim Ngun. You indicated that this was a discussion that was tape recorded, is that correct? So, Mr. President, there was no discussion. And there was no tape recording. 
I was only talking something unofficially. I was there alone, so I could not recall all the events because it had been for a long time. It was like a chit chat. Was there anyone present other than yourself and Kem Noon? As far as I know, no. There was no other. It's not Kem Noon, it's Kem Noon. I, I apologize for my pronunciation. Were you truthful, truthful when you had this chit chat with him? Perno. At that time, I was truthful, as I remember. I was not hiding anything. I talked about the qualifications of the. Communist Party of Kampuchea. I also talked about the weaknesses of the party. Kem Nguyen worked with Tamok. Thank you, Mr. Nguyen Che. Uh We'll be getting back to this document uh, during the course of my examination. Um, I wanted now to just turn to some general questions uh, about interviews that you've provided in the past to reporters or journalists um, about the background and history of the party. Uh, between 1998 and 2007, have you occasionally spoken to reporters or journalists who came to visit and interview you? I could not recall it. I could not recall who is who. But I did talk to some people. I do not recall whether they were journalists. And I talked to them based on my memory. And I was trustful. I'm going to, going to read you some, some names and ask you if you remember speaking to these people. Um, Nusara Tetawat, a reporter from Thailand, who interviewed you around September 2001. Do you remember speaking to that person? No, I don't remember that. Do you remember a Meng Tri Ye who came to visit you in June 2006? No, I don't. I don't remember the name. I don't remember anything. Do you remember a Japanese journalist who came to meet with and interview you in October of 2006? No, I don't remember that either. How about Mr. Tet Sambat? Do you remember the interviews you gave to him? Yes, I know him. I remember that. Because Tet Sambat tried to contact me for the last part, 10 years. He contacted me for 10 years until I trusted him and I know him now but when he met me he told me that what he would get from me 
will be used as archives for your family. I was not paying attention that the document he would obtain from me would be made into a film or a documentary film. I don't know whether he was lying to me, but he told me that it was or it will be used as an archive for my family. And so I told him truthfully. I know him, Mr. Tizambad. You were aware that you were being filmed, uh, a videotape recorded, when you were speaking to Mr. Tet Sambat. Is that correct? No, I don't think I was being videotape recorded. Maybe he was hiding the camcorder. I don't know. I just want to make sure that's clear. You're saying you did not see any camera uh, filming your interviews when you were meeting with Tet Sampat? I was not paying any attention. And you said you were truthful in the conversations you had with Tet Sambat, is that correct? Yes, is that, it, it's correct. Is it true that after you were arrested and detained here at the court, that you listed Tet Sambat as a relative? so that he could come and visit you at the detention center and continue to interview. Is that true? My wife, rather, that's about his wife, maybe a relative of mine, but that somebody himself is not. We are still in contact with her. My wife frequently visits that somebody's wife, but I had never before known him and his wife. But when we talk. When we talked together, we realized that we were related. I had some of my relatives in Jorokrasang village. I understand that you and Tet Sambat are not actually related, but my question was whether you had him listed as a relative with the court so that he could come and visit you and speak to you in the detention center. I don't remember that. Do you consider him a friend? No, I don't. We just know each other, just like no more people. Did you have any understanding or agreement with Tet Sambat as to when he could release, publicly release the information that you provided to him? I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, to interrupt. But I don't understand the relevance of this question for uh, the scope of the first trial segment, which is only about the historical background, the pre-1975 period. Mr. President, the, the relevance is that in the book that Mr. Tet Sambat published of his interviews, can, uh, based on his interviews with Mr. Nunchea, there are parts that discuss the history 
and the pre-1975 period. That is the relevance of the interviews that the accused had with Tet Sambat to this part of the proceedings. I don't know which book um, the prosecutor is referring to, but as far as I'm aware, that book is not uh, on the case file. Counsel, when that, that book was recently discovered, it was, it was filed uh, with the chamber uh, either last week or the week before, and I've seen it myself. It was posted uh, onto the case file at some point. I'm happy to find the case file reference number for you later, but I'd suggest uh, um, you get that information from me uh, during the break uh, and that I'd be allowed to proceed with my questions at this time. Council Sonoron, as far as I know, is the court request Mr. Sesamba to send the documentary film that he has shown in foreign countries, but Mr. Sesamba does not allow the court to use that documentary film. He does not also allow the court to use his book as a basis to excuse my clients. So I hereby reject uh, the questions to by the co-prosecutors. Mr. President, I think for... Mr. President, to fully understand what is being stated by the prosecutor, it would be useful to hear what file he is talking about. When he says that a document has been filed, what file are we talking about? Are we talking about documents that have been appended to the closing order? Are we talking about documents that uh, in the investigative documents, uh, it will be useful for the clarity of these discussions to have a little more precision here. The President, can the co-prosecutor clarify or indicate the identity of the book which you have referred to? The books that you referred to as the book written by Mr. Tetsambat and you are basing on it as the evidence to talk about the history or historical background of the democratic Cambodia. Yes, Mr. President, I'm happy to do, to do that. Just, just so we're clear, uh, I'm not intending at this point right now to start asking questions from this book. I was, I was asked for the relevancy and these are foundational questions to establish the conversations. But I'm somewhat surprised this, this, this document was posted on the case file just this week and recently. And if counsel are not following the information that's being posted and provided them on the case file, that is certainly not our, our problem. The, the ERN for this document is 0075747. To five six eight, there is a e uh, e document filing number that I will provide to the court after the break. I don't have it here right now. It is a book called "Behind the Killing Fields" by Tet Sambat and Gina Chan, and uh, I'm told that the uh, the case file number is e one five two point two. Monsieur le Président, je... Mr. President, I thank the prosecutor for reminding us of our duty to keep a close eye on the case files, but it seems to me that when he is talking about the document having been filed, he, he is... is saying that uh, this document has been communicated to the parties 
when you talk about putting things on the on the file, it's not quite the same as communicating the document to all of the parties to the trial and submitting evidence that uh, can be uh, accepted as such by the chamber isn't uh, quite the same thing either. And I don't think, therefore, that we should uh, be at the receiving end of too many lessons on this, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kanabas, please go ahead. Uh, if I may, just very briefly, uh, I believe it was on a Friday afternoon that we received an email from Mr. Cayley with an attachment uh, about this particular book. Um, and I believe it was after opening statements. Uh, in the very first page, it indicates that the book uh, w was the product of or, or from a thousand hours of interviews, 1,000 hours of interviews with uh, Mr. Nunchiel. When reading the book, uh, those of us who may have read the book, uh, it's quite apparent that this is more of an autobiographical uh, or somewhat autobiographical with Tet Sambat uh, talking about himself, also drawing certain conclusions uh, from uh, the interviews, not necessarily quoting all the time. Uh, my objection would be, unless Mr. Tet Sambat is, is definitely going to be appearing, I would be objecting to this book coming in unless, unless the prosecution uh, were able to get a hold of the thousand hours of tapes and of course uh, wherever he wishes to quote from the book a verification can be made that what Mr. Nunchia actually did say is in fact what is being reported. A summary, a summary of what Mr. Nunchia may, may have said or some sort of a conclusion drawn uh, is not the same and for those reasons I would object <clears throat> but I do recognize that the prosecution in, um, in doing their due diligence did provide it to us, albeit late. It has been around for about a year or so, but I certainly wasn't familiar with the book, so I can understand how this may have fallen through the cracks. Thank you. Just Mr. Nunchia, says the President. Mr. Nunchia. I wrote a book about my biography. And I asked Mr. Tsambat to publish the book in Cambodia. He told me that it would be more worthy if he published the book in New York because people in Cambodia do not like reading. I don't understand very much about this book publication either. So I allow him to do that. It has been some years 
before its publication. I wrote about the history of the regime. And Mr. Zamba translated that into English, and he entitled and he entitled the book as "The Enemy of the People." But he did not consult it, consult with me before he did that. My original book was about the history of the party and to analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the party. He took the book and published it in New York because he believed that it was more valuable to do so. But I was not aware of that. I do not know how the book has been changed from my original version. I asked for a copy of the book so that I can compare the new book with my original book, but I was not given the new book. So this is the point. I was not even informed that uh, this book has been made into a documentary film. My rights have been violated for this action. The president. Well, thank you, Mr. Nunchier, for your information. But the proceedings before the court may be different from what you have described. That the document need to be presented before the chamber, need to be examined before it can be accepted as evidence. And for any evidence to be examined, will be done pursuant to the facts determined to be discussed during the first phase of the trials, so that we can avoid any confusion. If we are not this strict in terms of the management of the trial, it will not be possible for us to manage trial. This is a technical issue with regards to the management of the trial. However, there may be instances that parties point to documents or refer to documents which have not been examined. Party may be referring to the documents which they intend to be put before the chamber at a later stage. And you are here being presented with a document, for example, the documents that you. Talked with Kamun. And now I would like to hand over to Judge Cut Rice to uh, provide further clarification on this matter. Thank you, President. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, my understanding is that you uh, refer to this book, Behind the Killing Fields. Uh, by Sambat Tet, in order to establish that there was uh, a, a relationship by way of interviews between the accused and Sambat Tet, and not as to the contents of the book at this time. Is that correct? Y yes, Judge Cartwright, that's correct. We, at this time, we're not intending to ask any questions from the book. We just wanted to clarify uh, the history between the two of them, the and whether they did in fact have these conversations, and how how these how this uh, book came about. Yeah. So, although at a later stage you may wish to put the book before the chamber, you are not doing that at this time. Is that also correct? That is correct. Thank you, President. 
Mat Elo. The president. It is now appropriate for the court to adjourn for lunch. This morning session is now adjourned and we will resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Parties and the public should be informed of this and return to the court by 1.30. Detention, detention personnel are instructed to bring the excuse bags to the holding cells downstairs and return them to the courtroom by 1.30.